Hi, I'm Owen from REST Australia. Thanks for tuning in to the REST Network. Before we get into today's show, there are a few things we have to go over. Firstly, what you're about to hear and see is limited to general information only. It's not personal financial advice like you get from a financial planner. Also, it's important to remember that past performance is not indicative of future performance. That means that anything that's happened in the past, or we say today, is not necessarily going to reflect what happens in the future. Lastly, please consider that any of the guests or myself are featuring on this program may have a financial interest in some of the products or shares mentioned. That's enough from me. I hope you enjoyed today's program. Kate Campbell. Welcome to this Money and Chill episode on the Australian Finance Podcast. It is good to be back. Oh, and we haven't done a Money and Chill episode for a little while, so good to be back behind the mic. Yes, good to be back with the Honourable uh, Mini, Mini Pizza. How are you going? I'm good. It's been a while. Yeah, it has. It's been a long while. What have you been up to? Just uh, chilling. <laughs> chilling? <laughs> yeah. Just chilling. My life's been pretty boring. Just, uh, I mean, working with you guys oh, is not boring. boring. It's never boring. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You got your uh, you got your cat denim on today. Oh, yeah, Mexican cats. Special money and chill. Yeah. For anyone watching? Yep. Nice. <laughs> nice. Nice. And we've finished the road trip. Yes, we've finished the road trip. So that probably got in the way of a few money and chills. Um, it's good fun. Good fun. Took a lot out of us though. <laughs> <laughs> got a few grey hairs each. I definitely did. I don't know about you two. I definitely. But it's good fun wrapping up in Sydney. Uh, you can go back and watch that if you haven't already. It's available on YouTube. That was over great. a month ago now. I know. Yeah, I'm just looking at Yeah, we're recording this in early November. That was early October. <laughs> wow. I feel like we just woke up from it, to be honest. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But um, you went to Bali in the meantime. Went to Bali on a little getaway. Yes. Yeah. Changu. Yeah. If you're looking for money saving hacks, Bali's pretty affordable. I wouldn't call it cheap anymore, but I'd call it affordable. How much was a massage? 40 bucks for two hours. That's pretty good. That's not bad. Yeah. yeah. It's a good massage. You can get them cheaper. And Dota Spa here would uh, cost you a week's pay. Yeah, but wasn't Vin in our team, who's from the Philippines, saying you can get a massage in Philippines for like 10 bucks <laughs> for two hours? Oh, my God. That's so good. Yeah. I mean, it depends where you go, right? Like the quality of the massage that you want. But yeah. So I got one every day for t- like 10 days. <laughs> what, was the, what was the food like? What was the food? Price of food? exceptional. Um, so this thing is that you pay a lot for spirits in Indonesia. So you could pay for, say, like a cocktail. It might be like 10 or depending on where you go, if you go to like a nicer place, about 10 to $15 a drink. So it's pretty much the way I thought about alcohol was it's Australia five years ago. It's not that cheap. Um, but in Changu in particular, which is not like the Kuta style party atmosphere, it's where everyone uh, who has an Instagram account goes and takes photos. Nice. Um, they, it, the restaurants are unbelievable. The, the scenery is lovely. Um, it's just like you're eating in Australia at a nice restaurant when you go out. And it's probably a half to, a th- you know, 60% of the price of a normal okay. dinner. Yeah. So not the most expensive holiday. Definitely not the most expensive. No, you can, yeah. And um, if you book through Jetstar or Virgin, they occasionally do their frenzy sales and whatever. And you can get, sometimes you can get there for about 300 bucks, 400 bucks. Mm. Um, sometimes a return trip is where they get you. But yeah, you can you can get really affordable accommodation as well. Yeah. And we paid 150 bucks a night, I think. And it was really good. It was on the beach. Nice. Yeah. And all the Bali regulars are going to be like, oh, yeah, that's nothing, mate. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's a good part of the world, bloody hot, but it's, it's good fun. So I'd recommend. Oh, lovely. Yeah. It's been 20 years since I've been there. That's how oh old I am. Oh, my God. I have never been. Yeah, well, I've you know, never I was been either. 10 when I was there. So. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What have you guys been up to? What about, what about you, Kate? Wrapped up the book? Yes. Mm. Book is fully out. It's been out nearly two months now. So that's been yeah. a whirlwind. Yeah. But uh, kind of wrapped up on the, the publicity for that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, coming down after the events, finally finished uni for the year. So Ooh. that mm. was a big... Congrats. event for me this week. I haven't uh, celebrated yet though. What are you going to do to celebrate? I don't know. I've had a bottle of Verve in my fridge that you gave oh, me since April. Open. So I was thinking wow. <laughs> of opening that on the Verve. weekend. Yeah. Verve's the one with the orange labels. It's very lovely. Yeah, no, nice. that'd be good. To celebrate. And um, I think that would be a great, a fitting Verve to the to the book, to buying happiness. <laughs> Still available. Uh, there's a, there'll be a link in the show notes. Yeah, um, there's, there's still some And there's some giveaways the going here and there, so check it out everywhere. Uh, and just for people that are catching up on the show and what this format is, Money and Chills, every, we used to be every month. It hasn't been lately because we've been on the road and so on and so forth. 
but it's just a relaxed um, conversation where we get Monique behind the mic as opposed Hello. to behind the camera. Who is our producer. Yes. yes. And uh, we talk about some things that might have helped to save money, um, little investing wins, these types of things, more casual. And you can send us your feedback via Spotify. If you use Spotify, we'll talk about that a bit today or just write into us, Instagram, wherever you get your social media as well. Um, one of the things we wanted to talk about, Kate, was our three best purchases under 30 bucks. Yes, because I know cost of living is a big conversation at the moment. So I was really challenging Owen and Monique to think about what are the things that they have got a lot of value from, but they're affordable. Because also, good idea for Christmas time coming up if you're looking for low cost gifts that actually are meaningful for people. Yeah, yeah, it's a great way to and do it. And not just a, a piece of junk that's going to end up in the, the cupboard. I've mm-hmm. got a few of those. <laughs> okay, so we've each got three each. Yeah, so our favourite purchases recently under $30. If it, we, I, I was thinking about this last few, few days and I was like, what have I actually bought under $30 recently? Because they're not often the most memorable purchases when they're under, mm. when they're such a small amount. So if you do have some suggestions for us to share next month, please let us know and maybe you can help someone with their Christmas shopping. Um, do you want to do one each? Like we go, we'll go around the around. table? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Who wants to go first? We're looking at you, Minnie. Oh, God. Why is it always me first? <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is your so, time to shine. Oh, God. <laughs> well, I bought, I kind of like replaced an item recently. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard of like the memo bottles. I mean, you've seen me with my memo bottle. Um, it's That's just the, the drinking clear bottle. Bottle. Yeah. yeah. Um, every time I whip it out, everyone thinks it's a flask because it's yeah, it like does in look a like rectangle. You're smuggling yeah. a gin. Vodka yeah, into yeah, a music I'm festival. some yep. gin or vodka in there, but it's not. It's yeah, just an ordinary sure uh, drinking bottle. Um, but what? I love it because it fits in all my handbags and like I got my camera bag so I can just slide it in with all my camera gear. Um, yeah. It's kind of like the size of a Kindle. Maybe yeah, a it's thicker. a rectangle. Yeah, width. so they have um, yeah, <laughs> they have different sizes. <laughs> they go by like um, like A4 size or A5, A6, like your pieces of paper. Yeah, cool. Um, and then I think they have like skinnier ones. Um, they have all these like accessories with them now. So you can get like a silicon cover if you didn't want it to just be like Ooh. clear. You can get like a, a desk stand as well. So they've really gone all yeah, out with yeah. these drinky bottles. Memo bottle. But um, I've literally, this is my third one. I've keep replacing it after like a couple of years and so, I just love it. So is this kind of going to be, how much did you spend on this thing? So it depends what size is how much it is, but I think they start at $30. So I was going to say because I'm looking online here and they're about 60 bucks. Depends uh, what size. Uh, a small <laughs> bottle on sale may have got Monique under the limit. So yeah, he, exactly. It he, was on sale, actually. So the one I got was $30. Okay. So here's a question for both of you, and I'll hold this up. Um, so is this the face of Frank Green in 2024? Is this what, you know, everyone was walking around with Frank Green's the size of their, I don't th- know. their hip last year like, over summer? I don't know. They've been around for a while, so I don't know. Very stylish, though, Monique. Well, I am pretty stylish. So. You are indeed. Um, okay, so <laughs> Memo Bottle doesn't actually do anything special to the water. No, it's, it's just, just like a, a convenient <laughs> size. It fits okay. in all my bags. What are you <laughs> expecting for $30? Like a flavour maker. I don't know. Something transformative. It's got a stainless steel uh, cap now. They uh, upgraded the caps from plastic to stainless steel. Wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, that's a good one. Memo Bottle. Yeah. Um, cool. I feel like, like that's it. probably a good Chris Kringle gift too. Everyone needs a water bottle. If you get one for 30 bucks, it's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you like me and I'm always like, I've got a tiny backpack and I can never fit like my Frank two litre yeah. drinking bottle in there <laughs> yeah. that people carry around. And I hate carrying around a water bottle. So that's at least something little I can chuck in my bag. Just get some anytime. refreshment anytime. Anytime. It's just on the go. Anytime. Yeah. And if you are going to a music festival... <laughs> Multi purpose. Do like, not encourage that. <laughs> WD 40 is like a thousand one uses from this memo bottle. Okay, Kate, uh, what's yours? Mine that I have mentioned on the show before, but I think is quite handy, is a meat thermometer. I got mine for $7 oh. on Amazon. It is still working. $7. This is about a year ago now. I've not had to replace the battery. And uh, <laughs> you do have to just Google what temperature you should be looking for mm-hmm. um, when you stick it into a sausage or a piece of steak. <laughs> into a sausage, oh, my God. <laughs> but I, the meat is much better and I don't have to worry about poisoning myself. So it's a great hack for adulting. Ah, okay, interesting. You know what? The thermometer was the third most popular item 
on Amazon deals last night when I checked. Oh, no way. But it was like a $29 one. And I was like, oh, is this the one she's going to talk about? Um, but you said you seven dollars. Yeah, I could get around that. I you need to send me a link one. to this. It didn't have. Yeah, I got it was, a cheap one just, too. And what is the job? The temperature. It doesn't have cool features. Yeah. yeah, cool. I need to get one of these because there may be a certain bird being roasted for Thanksgiving. Oh, no. So I need to um, suss this out. <laughs> I thought we weren't allowed to mention the bird on the show. <laughs> RSPCA, <laughs> the bird. Um, anyway, <laughs> that's a good one. Meet thermometer. Very useful. Um, so mine is actually very boring. Um, it's actually a Spotify premium subscription. Full disclosure, I don't actually have one of these. So I don't actually use Spotify. In fact, most of our audience do not use Spotify. Most of our audience rely on Apple's podcast player. Uh, and then it's Spotify after that. To give you a sense, it's over 60% of the audience uh, uses the Apple device. Um, and then there's the Spotify well down after that. But interestingly, this was launched not too long ago where you can get up to 15 hours. A month. A yep. month. If often. you've got a premium subscription. Yeah. So you can listen to an audio book. There's 150,000 audio books to choose from. And you can tune in. And I think I was trying to think about like where this would sit. Because with Audible, you got to pay. It's a lot more. I think it's about $27 a month. Yeah, I'm not sure I pay for the annual pack. <laughs> yeah, it's cheaper <laughs> if you're using Audible. And you get like credits to buy a book with. So if you're like a, like if you have a lot of books on the go at one time or you read voraciously or listen voraciously, you're probably better off with Audible. But for someone that's like struggles to read a lot but also wants music, um, I think the Spotify subscription is much better value than the Audible one. And I think that is great because if you do listen to this podcast, say, for example, and you want to listen to Atomic Habits, which I know you're going to bring up, Kate, um, Britney Spears has her book on Britney Spotify. Britney Spears was actually on the front cover <laughs> of the, when I was Googling for the price last night. It was actually on the front and I was like, Britney Spears has a book? Yeah. All I've been watching is a oh, <laughs> chapter one videos on Instagram and thinking, what is going on here? How is it? So far, so good. Chapter one. I mean, I can't really say much okay. yet. You sound and listen. Yeah, I know. It's oh. the first uh, audio book I've ever listened to. Are you Britney Spears, to she got Spotify? Me. Spotify, yeah. So you're taking advantage of this yeah, as well? Yeah, yeah. Because I realized it was free. I already pay for premium. So I'm like, well, yes, Why not? let's listen. <laughs> and it's such a good move for Spotify mm. because you're less likely now to switch away to yeah. mm. Apple Music or whatever just for music. Yeah. yeah. And most people probably only want, want one a month. Yeah. Um, yeah Audible, like I've just had a look, Sixteen forty five a month huh. or the two credit plan is twenty seven forty five a month. Right. That's what I was looking at. Um, okay. Audible's a great one that... If you get your membership on a deal, you usually get a month or two free and then you cancel it and they'll bring you back with a special offer after a few months. So mm. I would, this is something, if you want to sign up for Audible, I would always try and get a deal um, or buy a credit pack or an annual pack or something like that. So I was, this, this is a bit of an aside. I was trying to think about little purchases that would save you a lot of money. And what I was trying to work out last night was how much time people spend on websites where you have to pay, where you have to watch ads and like YouTube is a good one. So I was looking at some old data on this. In 2022, it was estimated that each visitor to YouTube spent 19 minutes and 35 seconds on the site daily. Mm. Right? And I was trying to think that's probably based on our YouTube content at Rask. That's probably two videos, maybe three, because people don't tend to watch for that long. I was trying to think about that. If you had to listen to to watch, if you were forced to watch two of those 30 second ads a day for 10 years, it actually works out. I <laughs> did that. You say it's 61 hours of your life over the oh next 10 years that you'll be watching ads. And then I was trying to work out okay, well, if the price of a YouTube premium subscription, which I've had for a long time, is $12.99, assuming that they keep that price the same, which I they think probably is going to go up. I think, I think it's going to go up to 15 or 16.99. Yeah. But it's just for the simple math. Um, if you assumed that that price was going to stay the same, it works out, I think it's about $26 an hour. Wow. So, in other words, you would it would be the equivalent of if you got paid more than $26 mm. an hour, you might see it as like an arbitrage, like a way to pay for the subscription to save yourself time and money. Mm. 
but I was like 61 hours of my life watching YouTube ads over the next 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is depressing. Yeah. So I always pay for the YouTube premium because I spend so long on it watching mm. finance stuff or TV or that sort of stuff. Yeah. Like yeah I'm, I'm on like, YouTube a lot because like, I don't have an antenna at home on my TV, yeah, so I'm just same. always on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, I, I watch all like TV, like 24 news or whatever's on that's often yeah. on YouTube in the background. So. Yeah, that was not my thing, but I just mm. thought that was when I was trying to figure it out. I was like, wow, that's interesting. Mm. Well, Disney just recently hiked their price up too. I think it yeah, was from about $10 to $14 a month. And um, mm. Netflix. Like Netflix Everyone's is actually quite expensive. Yeah. They, I mean, they have to because they're all kind of hard business models. But but I think it's all those things like when you're looking at your budget, if you don't look at it for a few months, you can mm. suddenly realize 10 of your bills, whether it's a few dollars with a subscription or tens of dollars with your gas and electricity bills, mm. suddenly they've crept up and you're wondering why you have less money left over at the end of the month. And it's because mm. all of these things have just slowly put their price up and maybe you've received yeah. an email. But if... Do you're not just sort of reviewing it every month. You don't see all of this happening. Yeah, the Amazon one was a big increase. From memory, that was like, well, I think it went from six ninety nine. I could be wrong, mm. Amazon, sorry. Six ninety nine to like nine ninety nine. When you think about that, in dollar terms, not that big of a deal, but in percentage terms, that's huge for yeah. Amazon. Um, any anyway, uh, digression there. What was um, your next one? My next one. Um, so it's a bit niche. I'm a photographer, so recently I bought um, camera filters that you just kind of like screw on the lens and you can get oh, like yeah. all these special effects. So it's like in-camera Photoshop. So I got this one that um, when you like point your camera to a spotlight, it like spreads out into like a star effect. So you got all these little oh, stars cool. um, around the subject or whatever. Um, and there's like heaps of other ones. You can get like one that looks like um, old film or just a green colour or a red colour or there's like a bajillion different types of filters. Mm -hmm. But um, I haven't really like used them before and I just got a couple for like 20 bucks or something recently and I've been really enjoying like just experimenting, doing different things with my camera. Can I ask you a silly question? Yeah. Why couldn't you do that in post-production? Like you take the shot and then do the edit? You can. It's just a different technique. Okay. So while you're taking the photo, I mean, like I get bored easily. So it's just a different challenge for me. Yeah, cool. Um, other people just like the way it looks more than doing it in post because it just, it looks different. Mm. If you're like a full on photographer, you can tell the difference if it's done in post or in camera. <laughs> so what are these called, these things? Camera filters. It just like those, I've seen the little things you get screw on the end. Yeah. And then there's these other things that they're called fractals where you can, it's like, they look like knuckle busters. <laughs> oh, okay. So, and then you hold that in front of the camera as well. And that's kind of like the same thing as like a camera filter. But like the ones that I used recently, they just screw on mm. to your camera lens. So cool. it's like hands-free, you can still like zoom in, focus, whatever, change well, all your settings. What do they cost? Um, they range from like the ones that I got were like $15, $20. Okay. Or you can spend hundreds. So it just depends on the brand or like where you get them from. I got mine off Amazon, just a no brand. But yeah, mm, cool. they've been really fun. Like it. Yeah. Like it. <laughs> well, actually, I might jump back to me real quick because my one is Amazon, so I'll be quick. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people don't know that when you get an Amazon Prime membership for like shipping, you also get Prime Video. Oh, yeah. So if you think about Netflix and everything going up, Prime Video is much cheaper when you also consider the shipping and all that sort of stuff. So $9.99 was my understanding. But that also comes with not just shipping, you get the, some deals, uh, obviously. You get music, which mm -hmm. I've never used it, but if you wanted to, say, get rid of Apple, Spotify, whatever, you could probably do it. Um, and it comes with Prime Reading as well, which is like a, I believe is a service, like limited titles, um, but you get basically, you know, a revolving door of those. So it comes with a lot for $9.99. You'd have to say it's going to go up in price. And Kate mentioned that if you do purchase for full year, I think it is quite a bit cheaper as well as Disney is cheaper. But that was my number two. So just nip that in there. Okay. Yeah. I am definitely a fan of Amazon Prime and Spotify now that the audio books are yeah. included. Um, multiple sets of house keys. Low oh, cost. Oh, yeah. Cool. But leave one with a close friend or family member that lives nearby yeah. And uh, hopefully that's going to save you a lot of money if you lock yourself out of the house. Yeah. I've yeah. done so, this. It's very handy. <laughs> yeah. So um, be proactive, leave a set with a friend, and hopefully if you lock yourself out, you do not have to pay a call-out fee and get your locks changed. Yeah. Would you ever hide a key somewhere? 
I'm in a sort of a yeah, flat, that so I can't where really. you are, I guess. <laughs> mm. I wouldn't because I'm in an apartment, so like there's no. Maybe really. you could just get like a little key and just like shove it in the dirt over in a secret just spot. Bury it. Get one of those fake um, rocks. Yeah. Like, that open up and you yeah. shove your key in there. But yeah. They look fake. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you could tape it on the if you underside it with of your other rubbish rocks. bin. Yeah, yeah, like a secret little spot. And if someone picks up, they're like, oh, okay. They don't know where it goes. <laughs> yeah. You could be far away enough from your place so that yeah. they have no chance of picking where it goes. Well, my keychain <laughs> used to have my address on like a oh, thing no. attached to it. And then everyone was like, <laughs> no. what are you doing? And I was like, oh, but they can return it to me. And they're like, no, it would lead them right into give your a, place. <laughs> give them a phone number. <laughs> so that has been since removed. Put a phone Ooh. number on there for sure. You know what was on Amazon but it wasn't within 30 bucks, so I couldn't do it. It was $41 It's the Apple AirTag. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Have you guys had one of those before? No, but I'm going to purchase some for my America trip next year. Yeah, put it yeah. on your luggage, put it on your keys, that sort of stuff. You yeah. can get a pack of four for about 200 bucks. That's so not under bad. 200 bucks or something. Pack of five, I think. Yeah. Yeah, so if you do want to put them on everything. Probably which, good for travel. Mm. Which, yeah, the, the technology behind that is kind of cool because it doesn't just use your, like, phone's Bluetooth. It actually uses other people's as well. That's okay. how it can find its way around and it can use the networks that are available mm. to it, which mm. is really cool technology. Yeah, wow. Um, okay, cool. So I've already gone with my Amazon one. Maybe I'll just jump straight to my third one then. Mm -hmm. Scrub Daddy. <laughs> Scrub Daddy is my number three. Love He's it. very excited I about got this a, one. I got a little, what do you call it, like a sponge yep. for $5.36 off Amazon. This is not endorsed by Amazon in any way, but Scrub Daddy is a little smiley face with a yellow uh, sponge and you can just stick it on the side of your sink or in your shower or whatever. And people swear by them um, and it's super cheap because one of the things that's annoying is, I don't know if you guys do that, you go into your kitchen and there's just like a cloth or something just on the thing or sometimes you hang it from the tap or whatever. Mm -hmm. With this, you can just kind of tuck it away, which is really nice and neat and it's, it's really good. So it's really good quality. So you use this scrub daddy in place of a like a yeah. cleaning cloth for your bench. Oh, more so for your dishes and that sort of yeah, stuff. Okay. Is there uh, any other difference between a normal sponge? Well, I, to be honest, I'm yet to try it. So yeah. this is me. No. I've ordered it. <laughs> I'm waiting. But everyone I, everyone I go to, I'm like, oh, I'm going to talk about Scrub Daddy. I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, I've just heard of this thing. So it's it, been around for a while. Yeah, what didn't you say Shark Tank had it on? Yeah. What, 2012? 2012. 2012, 2014 in the US. <laughs> There's a full range now of Scrub yeah. Daddy related things. Scrub Mummy. Scrub Mummy. <laughs> 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 so basically there's a sponge you can get for five bucks um what i did for this episode is i basically went to amazon in case you haven't picked up on this already i and picked up on this filtered amazon. by the highest reviewed products in the world and lo and behold i was on the american website i was like huh full bed sheets for 29 bucks i'm going to talk about that and we went to order them by the time you get them to australia 70 dollars mm. so i was like we're not going to do that um, but Scrub Daddy was in there and I did the thing where you can, on average, an Amazon user reorders after two months. So I was like, bang, hit that on a recurring subscription. I don't think you can say it's your best purchase if you haven't tried it yet. Yeah, I know, but I've just gone off the reviews. I actually did have reviews. <laughs> um, I, I do not. I think you cheated. They were some of the best things that I've, the best, reading the reviews, <laughs> so much fun. Um, like people complaining and they're like, you know, I was going to give us a one star and then all of a sudden it's stuck and now it's a five star. I'm like... What? what? What kind of review is this? <laughs> anyway, Scrub Daddy. If you use it, check it out. If, if, if you use it, let us know what you think. Jump on Instagram or Spotify. Let us know about Scrub Daddy. If you tried the mummy version, let us know of that too or anything else. <laughs> um, let us know. It's a, it seems like a real cool thing and I'll report back next month. Nice. That's mine. Mon, back to you for number three. Yeah. So um, Kmart is great for most things. Mm. And... I've found these um, DIY packs. So there's like little pottery packs or like painting by numbers or these like little crafty yeah. things, um, embroidery. Like they have a bajillion little DIY little packs. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure they start at like $5. And so whenever I'm bored, I check out Kmart and I buy a little box cool. and there's a little project. And you they're really good for like, crafts. I love arts and crafts. <laughs> but um, they're really good for presents as well. Like if you've got a crafty friend or something and there's lots of like um kids options as well so if you got any kids in your family just get one of these little packs and like happy days Good christmas present yeah. for little kids little yeah little stocking stuffer yeah cool yeah well we've got 30 uh 20 stencil or what are those little trestle things at home about 100 brushes because we just had a hens party at our place oh, so no we way. hosted and there's stuff everywhere so oh you God. can have some of those if amazing <laughs> i'll bring some in next week that's a good one so that's at kmart yeah they're really cool. cool. I love them. 
Yeah, nice. Like it. Okay. My third one is my very first Sarah J Mass book, Throne of Glass, because I think it sort of ignited a love of reading fantasy books and reading for fun mm. in me. And now, I mean, they're all under $30 individually. Collectively, I've probably spent a few hundred dollars because she has about 15 books now. Um, but they're things I reread again and again, and I'm listening to the audiobook versions at the moment. So Wonderful. it is... A great series if you're looking for a fun fantasy read over the summer. Otherwise, Brandon Sanderson books are quite good as well. Was it you recently who mentioned the power of giving a book to someone? I've talked about that for years. Yeah, I don't know if someone was like had this epiphany and I, did, I didn't think it was you because I was like, yeah, that's why Kate wants to give away books all the time because sometimes you give away a book or most of the time, let's be honest, you give away a book, people don't read it or mm. it like sits on the shelf or whatever. But the one in 10 times that you give away a book and someone reads and it changes their life is makes up for like the other nine, mm. I think. Well, I always give friends and family a book, among other things, for Christmas. So I have a lot of fun picking out the book I want to give each person. So whether it's uh, mm. going to your local bookstore or going to Amazon or Booktopia, lots of places. But uh, I think it's a good tradition. Like I, I want to keep doing it. But So you give away one book every year? To one person, no, like to each no, person. No, like so to each person in my friends and family, I will pick a book for them each I on think, top of their gift. I think one year you gave me Your Head is a Treehouse or something. <laughs> did you read it? <laughs> yeah, did you read it? What was Obviously it not. It's still a treehouse. <laughs> <laughs> no, but some of the books, I haven't read this one. I've got to be, I'll go back and read it. I did have a skim through. It was full of heaps of great pictures and stuff. But I tell you what. The book, the journal that you gave me last year, I use that each and every week. Oh, no, week. it's your head as a houseboat. <laughs> yeah, it's a houseboat. That's <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> I don't know what that says about my head. But, um, <laughs> but no, some of the books you've given me have been wonderful. Um, and in, between, in particular, that journal. Um, like, that journal, was, that's excellent. I'm actually going to buy it for myself this year for 2024. So um, I think that gift is, is very thoughtful because you actually have to think about who's getting what at what time, right? Mm. And that's very hard to do with books. Yeah. No, it's a lot of fun. You pick something that they they would like, but they wouldn't quite pick for themselves. That's that's my aim usually. Yeah. Yeah. I think I might actually try and do that. I know a lot of people in my family are readers. Some have retired recently. You know who you are. Um, so they'll probably have time for a book now. So I'll try and try it on and see what happens. It's a good idea. And it's but pretty yeah. cost effective. Books are fantastic. There's a lot of books that are sort of safe for anyone if it's a Kris Kringle. Otherwise, great gift under $30. And if someone doesn't like it, they can just give it to someone else, put it in the bookshelf or take it to the op shop. Like, can I be selfish then for everyone listening? What Have you given thought to some of the books that you might be buying this year for people for Christmas? You don't have to reveal who they're going to, but just general, like books in general, anything that's... Well, my dad really likes birds. I found one on different types of Australian birds. <laughs> Amazing. Um, so that's that's one of the thoughts I was having so okay. far. Bird related. Um, okay. Sometimes that's books that I've enjoyed during the year. Um, I know one of the books I was going to mention in this episode that I've been listening to the audiobook version, thanks to Spotify, is yes. called Clear Thinking. Shane Parrish. Uh, Shane Parrish's new book, new book. And I would say that's like Atomic Habits, but for thinking. Yeah. Instead of habits. So a bit more, like, deeper, I'd yeah. say, as well. It's like yeah. a really deep. There's stories, meanings. it's philosophical, but I've taken a lot of notes and I haven't done that for a while. So um, I would recommend listening to that one if you like thinking about thinking. Yeah. Shane's, what's Shane's tag Farnham on? Street? Yeah, f- oh. f- f- fs.blog is his website. He's a former um, intelligence uh, officer and he was, I believe he was still doing that, he says at the start of the book. He was still doing that when he started to write the blog, blog anonymously and now obviously he does that full time. He's an investor and all that. I, th- I still think it's like the best website on the internet. I think it's just wonderful and his podcast is brilliant. Mm-hmm. And good news, he's coming on the podcast. He'll be appearing in about a month's time or so. So it'll be a real treat to sit down with him for 45 minutes or so. New York, He's on the New York Times bestseller list, isn't it? Oh, I'm sure it is. Yeah. he's. Uh, I think it's in the top three or something crazy like this, which is wonderful for him. Good on him. It's his second book. Um, so that's great. And I, I, yeah, I, I think that's a good book. And I think if people are on the fence about that one, um, maybe just wait for the, the episode to drop. Maybe in our final Money and Chill episode for the year, I'll have picked my Christmas books by then. So nice. I'll share them in that episode. Yeah, cool. Why don't we jump to this section then, like some of the resources that you found recently. But 
before I did that, um, what do you reckon if we exclude buying happiness by Kate Campbell, which is available at all good bookstores and um, online, excluding that book, Kate Campbell, which book do you reckon we've given away the most this year? Well, I've given the psychology of money away a lot this year, and we've given a lot of strong money Australia because of Dave. Yeah, yeah, Dave. I think did I see the other day he sold ten thousand books. I know it's amazing. Oh, yeah. Self publishing. Yeah. <laughs> so for a lot of people's benefit, self publishing means that basically when you order it, Amazon prints it. Yes. Rather than going through a publisher which but stocks he it, and organizes sends it to everything. Yeah, he that's did the cover, the organized yeah. editing. All that I think sort of he finally stuff. did an audio book as well because he was talking about yeah, that on Twitter. No, the audio book's been around for a while, so you can listen to that for free on Spotify as well if you've got a premium subscription. Um, I so, don't think I'm not sure what other books. Such given. a good way to monetize. So if you do listen to Dave Gow, Strong Money Australia, go and download his book on Spotify, even if you don't read it, because you'll probably get paid. So it's good for Dave. <laughs> You probably have to listen to it. Maybe you have to listen to a bit, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how the Spotify payment algorithms Sorry, Spotify. work. <laughs> um, which is kind of cool. I think we've also, I've given away a lot of Ulysses Contract by Michael Kemp, who we had on the show. Um, and then we we gave away a lot of Evan's money, uh, Evan's book. Yep. Yeah. Mind and money. Glenn gave away quite a few of his book, My Millennial Money and My Millennial Career at our events this year. Yeah. So we've given away a lot of books. What else? What Anything else interesting on your list? Well, I've been following the now concluded trial of Sam Bankman Freed over the last few months. Mm -hmm. um, Innocent? Guilty <sighs> on all counts. Um, Leave crypto alone. Some different podcasts like Against the Rules and the Wall Street Journal's daily podcast. So they were they had court reporters that actually went in and watched. So they were sort of giving you a play-by-play. -play. Um, it was quite interesting to listen to how that all unfolded because it's been about a year since it all blew up. Does he have... Like, did he get, like, sentence or is that different? Um, that, I think that comes later. Okay. So he's guilty? Yes, what, says the jury. What, I, you may not know off the top of your head, but what was he basically found guilty of, like, misappropriating funds, misleading yeah, it people? Yeah, like wire fraud, different types of, there was, I think, six or seven counts. Oh, wow. Okay. So that's a shame for everyone involved, obviously. Um, so Sam Bankman fried, obviously, very big well-known crypto uh, advocate in the early days um, and they had a whole heap of things going on on the side, which was not according to the rules. Um, I've been reading Ulysses' contract um, because I read it and I kind of skim read it and then I went back and read it again. And I don't think it's a book you should skim read because I think there's so many valuable lessons in there for investors. I've been chatting to Mike a lot lately. He's actually appearing on the Rask Live in a couple of weeks as well. Uh, so if you are subscribed every Wednesday, we go live and uh, Mike will be on that to answer some questions and to go through some lessons from the book. But I think that's been a really successful book in Australia. And I've got to say, I reckon it's probably the best investing book in it, written in Australia mm. that I've read, to be honest. I think it's just excellent. I think it's truly excellent whether you're into passive investing, value investing, you love Buffett. There's you, a lot of just, depth and nuance to it. Yeah. And I think that's the kind of – some of the things – with all respect to Mike, Mike's brilliant. Some of the things where maybe I would have kind of like a different opinion, but probably a right, you know, basing on a different set of kind of facts, I guess, or figures. But he's, if you follow the, the lessons in that book, you'll live a better life, you'll live a richer life, you'll live a happier life. And I think that's the secret to investing well over the long term. So, yeah, have you been other? So, what have you been reading recently, did you say? Britney Spears' book. Just listening to it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. About her life. Um, I really can't say much about it. Chapter one. Okay. I haven't got past it. Book review next month. <laughs> yep. Book reveal. Book review. Okay. It's all happening. Um, what? Any other interesting reads? I've I've got two copies of Shane Parrish's book. If I was going to buy one, I'd buy the, the soft cover, the standard cover, because it r arrives a lot quicker next day with Amazon. Mm -hmm. You buy the hard cover, it comes from America. So it takes a while. Yeah. I'd probably, I'd probably buy the paperback because yeah. I've taken so many notes from it. Yeah. So it's that's one of the challenges with audiobooks is I'm having to when I'm listening to it while I'm walking suddenly I have to open my notes app and dictate, dictate. A, a note yeah and then check I wrote it down right <laughs> just in case I want to use it because for anyone not familiar with Shane's work it's kind of like you have to pay attention that's kind of the secret I think to it is like you have to be in a space where you're like even driving this morning as I was listening to it, I was like Oh, I just want to put that down. Oh, geez, I just want to remember that little bit. Yeah. Um, and it's not it's too just, long. So it's probably not your running audio book. It's probably some if you're in the house mm. that you can write something down. What do you think about two different voices narrating an audio book? 
Uh, I don't know. I listen. I've listened to a few books that are full casts mm. in the fantasy genre. Yeah, I suppose like the if Sandman. it's fiction, it makes sense if there's multiple voices. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I know. I feel like I like Shane's voice, the Canadian accent. Mm. Um, I like both of the voices, but I, I, I feel like I'd prefer that. Um, so, other than this, uh, behind the scenes, we're working on a lot of stuff at Rask. Um, we are calling for episode ideas for 2024. We can only go by what we think people are interested in and what you tell us based on your feedback. So please uh, write into us. You can get in contact with us on Instagram using the Spotify comment box. We know we got, we got a heap of feedback recently, guys, on the episode we did with Chris. The two topics that people obviously want to know about are how to upgrade if you already own a property, how do you kind of take the leap and buy your next property if it's your forever home, um, and do that safely. And the other thing was how do you use debt to buy shares, like to invest in ETFs, for example, redrawing equity on your house. So we'll cover all that in future episodes. But the only reason we know that is because you let us know. Yeah. So please write into us and let us know what you want to cover. If you liked investing month, uh, Kate's got a wonderful um, campaign over summer around kind of like a countdown which would be heaps of fun too. Get yourself ready and excited for the new year. Yeah. Um, we also love to do our 2023, you know, 2024 episode themed years where it's like, sorry, themed episodes where it's kind of like 24 ways to save and invest for 2024. So that'll be coming up soon, but we would love to hear from you. If you do remember, this is the one where Kate got a tip, an inside tip on a way to save money when buying coffee is to just buy a large one and share it between two people rather than two small ones. <laughs> Pretty smart. So, oh, there was a fish finger one in there one time. Though my parents said the other day that tip wasn't quite working anymore because the larges weren't as large and oh. they didn't feel like either of them got enough coffee. No. So I think it might be coming to an end, that tip. It's unbelievable how <laughs> how coffees in Australia have got like they were not narrower it as they've got taller. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Whereas you go to America and it'd be like the size of your arm. Oh, my God. Um, my pod machine's getting a good workout at the yeah. moment. Do you know what also features in the top 10 on Amazon is those dis, um, degrees, the descalers. Yeah. Um, they're everywhere on Amazon. If you're going to buy a descaler for your coffee machine, do it on Amazon. Um, good way to do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so ideas for 2024 episodes, anything you want us to cover, and also your saving and investing tips for the coming year and we'll make sure to shout you out and include them in our mm. upcoming episodes. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to do them across all episode, uh, all podcasts. We're going to do on the property show as well. We're going to do it on um, the business podcast and of course on the investors podcast. We've got some fun ones coming up, particularly um, across all of those where it's a bit silly. So um, tune in, uh, subscribe, all that sort of stuff. Well, ladies, this was heaps of fun. I'm so glad we get to do it again. And do we get to do it again next month in December? Yes, Money and we, chill? I've got one more plan before the end of the oh, year. Okay. Oh, hey. Here we go. We've got that big tick. Well, Monique, thanks for joining us. <laughs> Anytime. Cool. And Kate, as always, it's a pleasure. Thanks for listening, everyone.